The lovely Shasta Wes, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> She's Afghani American. She grew up in a refugee camp in Afghanistan and now is set to be the youngest woman to fly, to fly on a single engine aeroplane around the world. And I'm here in Mumbai. I'm very excited. Send us your questions. I want to hear from everybody. Got a question for you. How yes. much fuel are you are you flying with? How many tanks or gallons? You know, I have six different fuel tanks wow. that I transfer from and I my capacity is 300 gallons. So it's a lot of fuel. Whoa. I'm a flying fuel tank going around the world. <laughs> Any tricky stretches that you're a little apprehensive about? You know, my mountains that you got to go, you know, steep inclines and things like that? Oh, yeah. This plane, uh, it's a single engine. It's normally aspirated. So I have to be very careful, always hand flying the plane during the climb. I mean, it, it really tests your pilot abilities when you're that heavy in a small plane. What is the reason why... It's so abysmal, the numbers of female pilots. What percentage is it? You know, it's really low. Worldwide, the the amount of female airline pilots is not even 1%. Ouch. It's 0.06%. And surprise, well, I, would, I don't want to say surprisingly, but be proud because India is the, one of the leaders in empowering women to be in aviation. Nice. But the other world needs to work on it a little bit so you know there's many choices there's lifestyles it's expensive it's uh, challenging but it's nothing nobody can overcome listen this has been special thanks thank you so welcome to wherever you are it's 904 and it's uh well raining cats and dogs like i told you the fag end of the show yesterday shies the ways is here this is Good Morning Mumbai with Rishi K. What's up, yo? Wonderful to see you. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. And as people will see um, very shortly on Twitter and Facebook <laughs> when we start all our social networking, you're looking quite resplendent. Is that, is that your outfit? Is that your flying outfit? It's yeah? my flight suit. Uh, believe it or not, I don't wear this when I fly. It's usually more of a presentation piece uh, because the airplane that I fly, it's so small and it gets so hot, so... I'm just in casual clothes when I'm flying around the world. <laughs> unlike your mentor, and I saw a little video, yes. unlike your mentor who actually flew around the world in a dress. In a dress. Those Can were difficult times, that? Shaista. Yes. Difficult times. Yes, 1964. <laughs> I am an, I'm very impressed. Shaista's here because she's attempting to be the first woman to fly solo in a micro light flight around the world. Is that it? Yeah. Actually, the youngest woman to fly solo around the world in a single engine airplane. Wow. <laughs> so much for my aviation skills. Oh, no, it's okay. So how far have you gotten? You started off in Daytona. Was I that did. It? Yeah. Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, so far I have visited, I believe, India is my 12th international country. And uh, when I reach Thailand, I'll be halfway around the world. So you know, I've, I've crossed the Atlantic Ocean already, which I think was the hardest part of the trip. Uh, because over the Atlantic, the weather can turn on you instantly. And I'm flying a very small plane. It's a six-seater, so I have to avoid any icing or severe weather conditions. Um, and then I, I've flown into Portugal, Spain. Uh, I went to London, Italy, uh, G Greece, Egypt, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates. Uh, I went to Afghanistan, but not in my plane. I just went there because that's where I'm originally where I'm from. Uh, went to Dubai and came here to India, so... I'm making my way around slowly, but I'm excited to be here. It's beautiful. Shut your eyes and pretend you're not in front of an intimidating Indian radio host. Yeah. And now <laughs> tell me that India is the most exciting country you've been to thus far. <laughs> you know, it, it really is. This is my first time here. And believe it or not, I feel like I am meeting my sisters, my family for the first time. The way the people from from India, how embraceive they are. You know, they've never met me before, yet they're like waiting for me here at the airport with so much patience, so much excitement. It's really a treatment that you would expect from your family, but these are strangers. So it's, and it's so unlike what I expected, especially Mumbai. It's very modern. There's technology here that you don't find anywhere else in the world. Everything is moving fast. The people are so nice. The food's amazing. Are you kidding me? Are you talking about the traffic? <laughs> <laughs> <Just joking. laughs> hey, there's traffic everywhere, every city. So, yeah. So, yeah. Some, some, some worse than the others, that's all. But, I, you right. know, something, when we were kids, the biggest movie in this country, because we're just Bollywood crazy, we have all these song and dance movies. I've seen a few Bollywood movies. 
Bollywood well done. Movies, I'm very so impressed. Yeah, I'm I just thought I'd impressed. throw it in there. But go ahead. What were you saying? So, you know, our biggest movie star, uh, other than Shah Rukh Khan and Amir Khan and Salman Khan, is Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. Mr. Yes. Amitabh Bachchan was in a movie called Khuda Gawa. Yeah, okay. and Khuda Gawa was filmed in Afghanistan. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, the characters were Afghani and, yeah. you know, the movie w- had a lot of Afghanistan elements. It. Mm-hmm. And it's just fascinating. So a lot of us grew up with that culture, you know. And yeah. then we had another movie even before that, which is like my dad's time called right. Kabuliwala. Okay. Uh, and, you know, there were, there were a lot of migrants coming in from Afghanistan at the time, you know, and right. they were spice merchants. They would come in from Kabul and they would be called Kabuliwalas, like oh, people yeah. from Kabul. Kabul. Yeah, and, you know, th- th- these guys were just friendly, robust guys selling right. spices and things like that. So cool. uh, well, Afghanistan culture is very close to Indian culture. I've got to tell you that. You know, mm. likewise, in Afghani food, we see a lot of masala, spices from India, a lot of... um movies that people from Afghanistan watch feature Shah Khan and and so many amazing Indian actresses and actors. So I think it's it's we're trading, you know. Um but but there's a lot of in, Indian influence uh in, in Afghanistan and even Afghans in the United States. They love everything that India has to offer. Lovely. If you have any questions for Shaista, you know what to do. All you have to do is get onto social networking or you get onto SMS. It's one space, your comment or your name, uh, comment and your name to 53650. 53650 is the in-studio SMS line. On Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you look for HRI, S-H-I-K-A-Y. You tweet out, you post on the timeline, inbox. You have any question, I'll bring it up. If you have any comments, I'll just read it out in facebook.com slash radio one dot M-U-M, which is our official page. And there again, you can drop a comment in the timeline in inbox. Well, after that Justin Bieber concert, we're heading into the Ed Sheeran show um, in a couple of months. So uh, heralding that at the Geo Gardens in Bandra Complex. Here's Ed Sheeran, Shape of View. Back in a couple of minutes with Shai's The Ways. Ed Sheeran, Shape of View, Riddhi Kapoor. It's raining men. You take your music literally. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Rang Birangi. What song was this that you last played? The Jive song. It ended before I could Shazam it. I loved it. So you've tweeted out eight minutes ago, mate. Uh, I don't know. There's A Walk of Life by Dire Straits. Before that, Isn't She Lovely, Stevie Wonder, and It's Raining Men by Jerry Halliwell. Those are the last three songs on my list. And before that, there was 1D, What Makes You Beautiful. So uh, I don't know what song you're talking about. Uh, I'm sorry you couldn't Shazam it. Ani, Dance, Eat, Repeat. Asafetida of Lijat Papad is imported from Afghanistan. That's some trivia. Mm. I don't know this, if this Afghani American knows about that. Do you know that Asafatida was imported? Wow. <laughs> from, Good to that's know. That's an interesting thing, yeah. So, El Merchant, indeed raining cats and dogs, but music from your station makes the commuting ordeal a musical treat for the ears in traffic. Thanks very much, mate. Okay, more conversation with Shai Stubez. Uh, this is fascinating. The youngest woman to fly alone in a flight around the world. And what flight is that again? It's a single... Single engine airplane Single engine around airplane the world. Around the world. So Lovely. meaning I only have one engine. That's it. Wow. So. More conversation. This is Good Morning Mumbai with Rishi K. So let's talk about your growing years. I believe uh, couldn't have been easy. Refugee camp in uh, Afghanistan. You know? And when did your dad and your nice, big, robust family, like any Indian family, right. uh, c- come into the U.S.? Talk to me about that. So it was in 1987, the Soviet Union had invaded Afghanistan. The country was at war. Uh, So I was barely a year old when my family went to the United States. But when we got there, my parents didn't know anything about the American culture. They didn't know anything. They couldn't speak English. So I grew up speaking Pashto and Farsi at home. And I remember one day someone telling my father, uh, his name is Fahim. He was like, Fahim John. Do you realize, you know, you are very strict on your daughters. You know, you don't allow them to speak English at home. You don't allow them to wear T-shirts, you know. And this is hurting them because they live in such a, they live in America. There's so many opportunities, but they can't even speak the language. So that's when my father realized I need to put the Afghani mentality behind me and really empower my daughters to get educated, to take advantages of being in the United States. So that's when I started uh, uh, taking me being an Afghani woman more serious than just getting married at a young age and having a family. Wow. And there's six of you, six daughters. Yes. Yes. Mashallah. There's six of us. 
Mm, mashallah, Six lovely. Girls. So yeah. <laughs> lots of estrogen there. That I household. <laughs> I know. Your I know. dad obviously swamped by all of that. <laughs> I know. I know. And my dad was so looking forward to having a son that he tried six times and eventually he stopped he said okay it's not in my will sounds like a regular indian parent yeah, I'm, sure. <laughs> i'm sure so aviation when did that bug bite you i mean and this is unbelievable and everybody must want to shake you for this and say are you kidding me you were scared of flying absolutely so mother of god let's so go <laughs> When I would look up in the sky and I would see airplanes, I would literally like get out of the way. Even though these planes are so high above me, I just thought, my goodness, these planes are probably going to just go falling out of the sky, crashing into me. But you're always afraid of things that you don't know. And I had the first time I had ever flown on a plane was when my family came to the United States, but I was too young uh to live that experience. And when I was 18 years old, uh, I got into a commercial airplane. It was a Delta flight. I go to the back of the seat, and I'm holding onto the armrest, and I'm thinking, my God, this plane is probably going to launch into the sky like a rocket, and I'm going to experience this roller coaster. But to my surprise, as soon as this plane lifted off, it was the most beautiful liftoff. And something but sparked inside of me, I, I realized that this vehicle that I was so afraid of my whole life could take me around the world, could could take me outside of these corners that I grew up in. And that idea was so exciting. It was so exciting that when I landed in my destination, I didn't want to leave the airport. I was like, I want to learn how to become a pilot. So I tell young kids, sometimes your biggest fears in life is your biggest passion. And if you don't face them, you will never know. What do you have to lose? Maybe wow. you will find your purpose in life. You should do one of these TED Talks. Hasn't any, anybody approached you as yet? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I You're hope. awesome, man. I mean, oh, you, thank you. <laughs> there's so much to learn from your life. Yeah? Thank you. Mm. You know what you can do. <laughs> Wonderful. More shy the ways. We're going to head into some messages. And then there's uh, Demi Lovato's new one uh, that's coming up. Despacito, which I'm going to play for Shaista, special request. <laughs> it's a great music lined up for you guys. Uh, keep yourself busy uh, during these messages. It's one space, your common name to 53650. And you know it's H-R-I-S-H-I-K-A-Y across platforms and facebook.com slash video1.mum. The youngest woman to fly on a single engine plane around the world. That's Shaista Ways. She's Afghani-American and we love her. It's 919. See you in a bit. 94.3 Demi Lovato is back for the attack. Demi Lovato, Jax Jones, what you just heard was instruction. Shai's the ways is here for just, for those of you who just tuned in, uh, the first uh, or the youngest woman ever to fly on a single engine airplane around the world. And she's in India. I wonder if that's the only stop she's making here. I got to find out. This is Good Morning Mumbai with Rishi K. So another stop in India? Or that's it. No, I have another one. Calcutta. Oh. Yes. Well, I have to give Calcutta this. The food perhaps is a little better. Okay. But Mumbai is Mumbai. We're the I'm coolest. Sure. We're the coolest ever. <laughs> I am sure. I cannot wait to, to As visit. you can make out in big large countries like, you know, we are the US and us, the biggest democracies in the world. There's a lot of like, you know, uh, this city is that and that part of the country is this and things right. like that. <laughs> right, right, absolutely. Okay, let's right. come back to the flight. How much fuel are you, are you traveling with? How much would you need? And uh, are you all cramping it in the aircraft? How does it work? It is. So my co-pilot is a big fuel tank that holds about 59 gallons of fuel. Behind me, all of the seats have been removed and wow. sits there is another uh, 160 gallon aluminum fuel tank. So in total, I have six different fuel tanks that I'm using uh, when I'm flying around the world. And it really keeps you on your toes because you I'm always determining what is my center of gravity? What is my current weight? Uh, you know, what is the airplane going to feel? What it, What is it going to do? And mind you, it is a small airplane. Some people, they have this perception that I'm flying this big jet. And um, a lot of my climb performances, just the performance for the airplane in general it all has to be completed and computed by me. And I'm the only pilot in the airplane. So it's a lot of fun. It challenges me in ways that I really enjoy. Okay, 53650, the SMS line. I've just opened it. Uh, your last four digits are 3123 Priyank. Hi, HK. Which 
make and model of aircraft is shyster flying just curious i love this question i'm flying a beechcraft bonanza in a36 uh, it was manufactured in 2001 okay next question the last four digits are 1299 gaurav please tell shyster that we indians love afghanistan and what she is doing is very inspiring i'm sorry that's not a question it's just a comment <laughs> which is fabulous you. i appreciate it <clears throat> why why are there such abysmal numbers of women flying around the world and uh, you know the, the figures in the US are not very very confidence inspiring and considering the US is all for for women empowerment talk about that it is so internationally around the world the amount of female airline pilots uh only amounts to 0.06% this isn't even 1% um but be very proud india because india is one of the very few countries that are leaders in promoting women in aviation almost 11% of the population of a fee of pilots are women in india so you know india is definitely leading there are many countries that are trying to promote women in aviation and there's several factors one being that it's a lifestyle choice you know if a woman goes out to become a pilot she's not going to be able to provide for her home for her children as much because it's a demanding job you're you're constantly traveling and uh also too it's a very male dominated industry now i come from a family of five girls so you can imagine when i told my dad dad i want to become a pilot and he's looking at me thinking wow you go from having five sisters to this environment where it's very male dominated that could be very difficult and and i did find myself in difficult situations too missing the interactions that i have with my girlfriends and my friends so there are many factors but the thing is is aviation is so exciting it's so empowering the amount of confidence that it gives me as a person i want every girl to feel this you know and it, it doesn't necessarily come from an airplane it just comes from whatever you are passionate about and for me it's the airplane and i look at the statistics of how low of women there are in in aviation and i want to change that lovely ayer baba has gone and found shaista ways on twitter even i haven't done that as yet the story <laughs> of shaista ways and he's tagged you is very inspiring a dream which every child has when they look at an airplane so up above very well put man yeah all of us who were kids uh, you know look up in the sky and we wonder what it's going to be like and she's living the dream you know i have to work on my twitter <laughs> account i'm i'm not a big tweet tweeter. you're more an in- insta person yes you, yeah. instagram and snapchat so that's that's my niche okay so we're going to play your song it's louis fonsi daddy yankee and justin bieber you like it yeah I despacito <laughs> let's do some despacito and we're back uh which has the ways it's 9:31 bieber time daddy yankee louis fonsi and justin bieber despacito at 9:35 shares the ways the youngest woman to fly on a single engine aircraft around the world is in india there are two stops here mumbai city and kolkata more conversation <laughs> This is Good Morning Mumbai with Rishi K. Some wonderful questions coming in. This is fabulous. Rakesh Anand Bakshi. This is amazing. There are two parts to this question. The first one I already told you I'm going to ask you. There's another one which is also coming so I'm going to ask you that Shaista. The first one is can you ask Shaista up in the air who does she talk most to? Her in air best companion, someone or something beyond herself. How is her aircraft her best companion? Oh my goodness, my my aircraft goes everywhere with me and it's experiencing the beauty of the world. Um but you know what? I I'm a big believer of God and I don't like to say which God because that's not important. But for me when I'm up in the air, it's like these moments that I have that I take a mental picture of it. Wow. A- and I share it with kids when I go into these countries and w- during these events. I try to take a mental picture and share it with those kids cuz the view from up there when you see the world you don't see any borders you see the world as one and it's so inspiring it's so beautiful and it's something that I hope to share with many people but uh most of the time I'm talking to myself and to God and I'm just in awe like if you were just to see me in the airplane I'm just like <gasps> every corner it's there's a beauty a gem in the world And my airplane is has been my home. My only wow. consistent thing in the past almost 3 months now that I've been flying around the world. It's an environment that I have started with 
that I feel very comfortable in, and I couldn't think of a better companion. Part B of the question, Rakesh Anand Bakshi goes on to say, ask her which lands so far have looked most beautiful and divine from above, the bird's view. She wanted a land but could not. You know, all of it is, every every part of the world is very special and beautiful in its own way. You know, when I was flying into Canada, uh, you just, I saw icebergs and it wow. was, it was so surreal seeing icebergs up in Canada. Over the Atlantic Ocean, there's this shade of blue that to me it's ocean blue. It, it is a color that I have never seen before. And it just gleams, especially as the sun hits hits the water. And then you see islands. I saw mountains in Madrid, in, in Spain. I saw islands in Greece. Even coming, flying over Saudi Arabia. You know, it's nothing but desert. But it's this desert that you just, your heart just gets lost in. So every part of the world has its own unique little I don't even want to say little, they, their own unique special place. And it's hard to say which one's better than the other because they're all beautiful. Pradeep Nagpal on Twitter. Flying solo means you're your own best friend. And that's what she just talked about. Any scary moments Shaista wanna, wants to talk about? <laughs> yeah. So I do. And I'll I'll try to keep this as, as quick as I can. So No, you don't have to. When Go. I... <laughs> when I uh, when I flew across the Atlantic Ocean, again, when you're flying across the Atlantic Ocean, there is no land. So you have to mentally prepare yourself for the next eight, nine hours. All I'm going to see is ocean and sky. Um, the first time that I attempted it to fly across the Atlantic Ocean, I take off about 300 miles in. I have an issue. One of my, my HF antenna shears off the airplane. It hits the aircraft and it's just dangling out uh, of my plane. So you can imagine, here I am by myself, 8,000 feet above the ocean, in, in the middle of the ocean. I cannot talk to anybody. My only form of communication just went away. And there's this paralyzing moment that you have when something happens and you just think, wow, I'm stuck. And then I stopped myself and I said, no, I've been training this my whole for this my whole life. I'm a pilot. I am intelligent. You know, the plane doesn't know that this is happening right now. Only I do. So I need to be the pilot that I am and take ownership of the situation. So I immediately turned the plane back around. Um, there was a two-hour window where I didn't talk to anybody and this was happening. And you, I just calmed myself down. I said, everything will be okay. When I landed the airplane, it was in uh, St. Pierre, Canada. Uh, sorry, St. Pierre, French territory over by Canada. And I get out of the airplane and I'm inspecting this, this wire, which is destroyed. And the customs agent comes up and he says, hello, uh, where's the pilot? And I'm looking at him like, surprise, it's me. <laughs> and he's looking at me with my hair up and I'm like in regular clothes. And he's just like, no way. Really, where's the pilot? I'm a customs agent. This is serious. And I said, no, it's me. And he was just like, why are you doing this? Why are you flying around the world? And I said, it's my dream. It's something I want to do because there's so many young girls out there that don't have the confidence to follow their dreams. There's so many young girls who think that they can't do these things because of their backgrounds or where they're from. And I want to show them that it is possible. So when I was flying, I went from St. Pierre to St. John's, Canada. I had this moment in the airplane where I asked myself, Shasta, if you don't want to do this, if you're too scared, now is the time to turn back before I cross the Atlantic Ocean. Once I cross it, it's kind of hard to come back. And I said, now more than ever, those girls need me to be brave. And my whole purpose in this flight is to promote bravery and courage. And so... Thinking about what was waiting for me on the other side of the ocean, all these young girls that I'm meeting, that's what gave me the courage to get back in the plane and cross the Atlantic Ocean successfully. Fascinating. We're heading into the home stretch of the show. We're at 9.42. So questions, welcome. Comments, welcome. One space, your question or your comment and your name to 53650. Use Facebook, use Twitter.
एच आर आई एस एच आई के यू आई एंड ऑन आर ऑफिशियल पेज फेसबुक डॉट कॉम स्लैश वीडियो वन डॉट एम यू एम ड्रॉप ए कॉमन इन द टाइम लाइन इन बॉक्स ट्वीट आर आर ब्रिंग इट अप विच आई टू वेज सी यू इन अबाउट फाइव मिनट्स वे हेरिंग इन सम मैसेजेस From the Pretty Woman original motion picture soundtrack, ah, God, you can see reruns of that on nighttime television any day and any time. Richard Gere, Julia Roberts, King of Wishful Thinking, Go West, Shy's the Ways is the f- the youngest woman to fly on a single engine aeroplane around the world, and she's in studio making a stop in Mumbai City and Kolkata in India. And this is a fascinating journey. More conversation. This is Good Morning Mumbai with Rishi K. Okay, Alfred, your last four digits are nine zero two one. Thank you for this. Do you have autopilot when you need to take a break from the cockpit, Shaista? Yes, I do, uh, but I cannot use the autopilot for any overweight operations. So I'm, if I'm taking off, I normally have to fly, hand fly for a couple of hours before I can turn on the autopilot. But it's there if I need it. Okay, your last four digits are three one two three. You haven't given your name, whoever it is, but uh, this is the question. Hi, Rishi K. Is Shaista flying completely solo, or is she assisted by someone? Uh, I'll leave you to answer that. Maybe you tuned in late. Yeah. Sure. So I am flying completely solo. There is no chase plane uh, or anyone waiting for me on the other side. Now I did have two of uh, our team members surprise me in Dubai, and one of them actually came to India just so she could see uh, a little bit of India. But they don't normally travel with me. Uh, it is really me just in the plane by myself. No one's following me. Um, But there is an, an entire team that's waiting in the states that are tracking, helping, fundraising, you know, working on the logistics side of it. Ice Cream Man K tens. Which song would Shaista choose for her background theme for story of her life? <laughs> so, It's a nice one. <laughs> I have this already picked out because <gasps> I listen to a lot of music when I'm in the airplane. But Coldplay, Adventures of a Lifetime. Ah, oh, what a song! <laughs> Magic, isn't it? it Coldplay is. Adventure of a Lifetime. I got to pick that out while I'm talking to her. So I'm going to do be deft with my fingers. Suhail Merchant, very inspiring story, and the determination and confidence Shaista exuberates. Good to hear her out. Happy that we have Gul Panag inspiring us in India. Gul is another pilot uh, that we're very proud of. Was it is Indian? Well, Mohsin Sheikh. Wow, she's such an inspiration to millions. Mesmerizing chat. Respect Shaista ways is what he's tweeted out. Thank you, Suvarna. has put out a lovely picture thank you for that uh, which shaista just outside in our reception area <laughs> vibor chapre brave and confident girl shaista penning down her journey from being a refugee to around the world question mark girls need to read it is there a book in there you know i really appreciate all of these compliments but i want everyone who's listening to understand that i am not anyone special i am really just an average person who grew up thinking that dreams do not belong to girls like me and when i found something that i was passionate about i couldn't contain my dreams it it was inside of me and it wanted to come out and when i overcame these mindsets that afghani women don't fly girls who don't have money can't be successful once i got past this i was unstoppable and The only difference between me and any other girl out there is I w- I've been very fortunate to not allow any anything to deter my confidence and ability to do what I love which is flying. So as much as I appreciate all of these confident th- these amazing words believe me I am no different from anyone who's listening out there. The only difference is is I went after my dreams. I worked really hard and anyone has the ability to do what i'm doing if they do the same in a country sonal says sonal thank you for this is really special in a country where no one talks about periods would shaista like to talk about how she cares for her health while flying long hours if that is a really good question and it's funny because people walk around in eggshells cuz it's uncomfortable you know w- women there's so few of them who fly so this subject never comes up but it's a reality and it's a reality that i face Uh and the thing is is I found ways around it and how to maintain my health and it was all thanks to other women who are pilots that gave me wow. words of advice so you know we just have to stick together and come up with solutions and eventually they will be all norms that Fantastic. Pradeep Nagpal any pictures that travel with you in the cockpit? <laughs> oh wow you know I have I have very 
many things that travel with me, but one of the biggest things, and I actually have it here with me, the first woman who ever flew solo around the world, Jerry Mock, she served as a mentor to me. She flew in 1964. Uh, she was about 34 years old at the time. When I met this woman, this was about four years ago, I really was at a crossroad on whether or not I wanted to fly around the world. I, I just didn't have the confidence. Wow. And when I met her, we talked. The first subject that we, we shared about was, you know, I, I was nervous. I thought, I can't talk to this woman. She's this legend. She flew around the world 1964. She did it all in a dress. You know, I, I started talking to her, and the first question that I asked her is, I said, Jerry, what did you do after you flew around the world? And she said, two weeks after I, I landed from this around the world flight, I went to Afghanistan, and my jaw dropped. And I, she was explaining to me the mountains, the people, and I felt this connection with her, and she never said that this is something I couldn't do. She said, you go out there, Shasta, and you fly around the world, and you inspire as many girls as you can. So I have this coin that honors Jerry. It's, it's here with me. And I think about her every day. And voila, I really think she's with me when I'm flying around the world. So Hail Ganja, absolutely amazing and absolute inspiration for women in aviation. Okay, we're at the 957 mark. Uh, we're going to play Adventure of a Lifetime Coldplay because that is a, her, <laughs> uh, her motto, her song. Narayan Kannan says... Uh, Adventure of a Lifetime, Coldplay Rocks, that's our anthem too. Indeed it is. And when we come back, she's going to talk about uh, her not-for-profit and, um, you know, what she's doing in India and the reason she's here. Chris Martin, Coldplay, Adventure of a Lifetime, where the stroke of 10 shies the ways. The youngest woman to fly on a single-engine airplane around the world is in India, and this has been a fascinating journey. I'm so sorry. There are questions and questions and questions. <laughs> Just got to have her back for another session, but thank you so much. Oh, I've got to read out the last few ones. Uh, today's interview shows the diversity of your show, Rishi K. Keep inviting these beautifully diverse people. Make our commutes interesting and inspiring. Priyank, thank you very much. Uh, all of you, I'm so sorry, I can't read out all your messages, but uh, Ivan Krasto, Nicole, Pranesh, Narula, mm, all of you, uh, Parag Chodia, uh, Nazim Khan, uh, Sagar Achpal, thank you very, very much. A last leg of conversation with Shaistha. <laughs> This is Good Morning Mumbai with Rishi K. So your not-for-profit Dream Saw, what is that all about? And just a brief introduction for people who want to study further if they want to. What is STEM? STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. And uh, with the way that the society, that the world is going towards, STEM is at the forefront on how we as a society can grow. Science, technology, engineering, and math this is our future and unfortunately we don't have enough young women enough diverse talent contributing to the stem careers and many people have this very vague idea of what engineering is and what scientists do and what technologists do and so i thought if i want if i'm flying around the world i want to select a topic that's important and critical so science technology engineering and math stem is the whole purpose behind my non-for-profit dream store uh and a little bit about dream store so you know a lot of people think oh it's a solo flight around the world this is just shasta that's it but really there is an entire team a a board of directors an advisory council a dream team who are students who are contributing to the foundation of this organization. Again, students who are doing this, who are all a part of this nonprofit, they're all volunteers. There's about 40 act active members. If you go to our website, dreamsore.org, you can read about them. But it's all of these people that are empowering me through this flight around the world to inspire others. Our mission is to inspire the next generation of STEM professionals. So I'm not just getting into the airplane and flying around the world. A majority of our stops, we are hosting events to connect with young kids, bringing STEM, bringing aviation to them. And my goal at these events is to look at these kids in the eye and tell them, although I'm wearing this beautiful flight suit and I'm flying this shiny plane, you know, don't be misunderstood. You know, just a few years ago, I, <laughs> I, I was struggling financially. It's th That's the thing about dreams is that there's no... You could be in any circumstances, but you have to work hard towards it. So I'm here in India. Yesterday we had an event. 
Uh, the event was hosted by the Women in Aviation chapter here uh, in India. And I, I must say it was a, a very women who again greeted me and made me feel like I was coming home. Um, Air Asia, uh, Air India, these were all organizations that were there. And there was a group of young kids there that I was connecting with. And it was very powerful. You know, these kids look at me like I ins that I in inspire them. But in reality, it is them who inspire me to keep moving forward. So who's responsible for you being in India? The Women in Aviation chapter, uh, Air India. Uh, it's a whole community. I mean, I wish I could say it was one person. Also, Honeywell is uh, has stepped in and, and arranged a few events with children. So it's the community in India who <laughs> are responsible for me being here. And I, I have to say, I am so, I feel so loved by everybody here. And I cannot wait to come back. I cannot wait to come back and help inspire more young girls in India. Dr. Jaydeep Palap, an amazing conversation to start this lovely rainy day. Highly inspirational to see what she's achieved. All the best and many more to come. Indeed, up ahead uh, at the Royal Opera House is The Secret Marriage, a comic opera by Domenico Cimarosa. And Patricia Rosario, the soprano singer, and Mark Troop, the pianist, are lined up right after these messages. Uh, you want to hang by for that. Shais the ways, this has been such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you Pleasure's very much. Pleasure's mine. 10.05, my name is Vishy K. We're back in a bit. 94.3 Radio